check out this level of control that I have with this blooming highlight effect. Wow, this is awesome, fully customizable. I think you're really going to enjoy this. I'm gonna show you a technique today on how to get a phenomenal blooming diffuse look for any photograph in Photoshop. Now with this demonstration, I do also have a series of actions for you that are downloadable. However, I want you to watch how this works first so you understand everything that's happening with this diffused look. Then at the end of the video, feel free to download the actions that I'm providing for you that creates a diffusion palette of sorts in Photoshop. But first, let's talk about what diffusion is and how you typically will see diffusion in photography and videography. You see diffusion effects all the time in videography that usually comes from a filter that's attached to the front of a lens that disperses light in a unique way where the highlights slightly overlap the shadows to give the video a creamy, dreamy, and blooming highlight type of effect. It's a way to take a high contrast image and make it appear softer and make it appear less confrontational in a way and more inviting for the viewer to look at. Those ways are all fine and well doing it in camera, but there is a way that you can get the same look on your images in Photoshop and here's how. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna delete this layer here and we're gonna start over from scratch. The first thing I'm gonna do is duplicate the work that's here by pressing Command or Control J on that background layer. Now, if you had a series of work here, let's just hypothetically say that you had a curves adjustment layer and maybe a levels or whatever that might look like. If you wanted to make a duplicate copy of this, you're gonna need to do the crazy trick, Control, Shift, Alt, and E in Photoshop, which is creating a stamped layer. That's Command, Shift, Option, E on a Mac. That will make a duplicate copy of everything that you have underneath, and that will be the base that you start off on. I'm just gonna delete these layers because we don't necessarily need them for this demonstration. Now on this duplicate layer, I'm gonna call this diffusion. And we're gonna level this up. We're gonna start with one way and then slightly gradually level up and make this look phenomenal. So now we've got our duplicate layer here to start this off. The first thing we're gonna do is set this to the screen blend mode. Essentially what the screen blend mode is doing here is it's brightening our highlights for us. It's taking the highlights that are already in the image that we need to bloom, get that blooming effect for, and it's making them brighter. It is relatively maintaining the darkest dark areas and making a gradual transition through the midtones to get them brighter. But this primary focus here is going to make our brighter areas brighter in the image. What we're gonna do after that is go to filter, blur, and Gaussian blur. With the Gaussian Blur, we're gonna set this to the diffusion that we want. The less that we have on the Gaussian Blur, the less of a diffused look we're gonna receive. The higher we have it, the more spread of light we're going to get and the more blooming of those highlights we're going to get. However, one of the things that you need to know here is that this is based off of pixels, so the bigger the image is, the more you're going to have to blur it. The smaller the image is, the less you're gonna blur. So with my Sony A1, I'm probably gonna have to increase the pixels there for that camera. But with my Sony A7R 3 40 megapixels, I might use less on this radius. Anyway, we're gonna press okay. This is essentially the base of everything that we're going to do with our diffused look. And this actually creates a really wonderful diffused look, very similar to what we see in videography. But let's take it one step further. What can we do to this that will make this diffuse glow even better? Well, one of the things we can do is add a curves adjustment layer here. And with that curves adjustment layer, we're gonna press Alt or Option in between the two layers, and that's gonna create a clipping mask. What that means is that this curves adjustment layer is only affecting what's happening in the diffused look. So now I'm gonna set three points here. And where this is going to shine really nicely is gonna be in the midtones. So as we move these points, we can see we can make this slightly bit darker, which is nice because it makes those highlights boost a little bit more. Our midtones will control the amount of blur that is going to transition throughout the highlights in the midtones. So if we pull this down, we're gonna get less of that, uh, that glowing kind of effect and a more natural look. And if we do the same over here with our highlights, we can bring this down to get less of that very bright, powerful, punchy look that we have here that's affecting our color. That will lead us to the next level. If we don't want this curves adjustment layer to affect our colors, we only want it to affect our luminance value, we'll change the blend mode to luminosity. That way this is only affecting the luminance value of this diffused look and not affecting the color. So we don't get that punchy high contrast color in our image. And that looks wonderful. And again, this curve is only affecting what's happening here. If we were to actually turn this layer off 
and then put that curve above this, this is exactly what's happening with that curve and it's not good at all. But because this curve is clipped into this diffused look, it's giving us a wonderful way to manipulate this diffused glow. So let's kick it up another level. With this curve, we adjusted the luminance value of this diffuse look. Let's take it one step further and we'll add a little bit of color to it. So let's add a solid color layer here. I'm not worried about the color right now. I just wanna press and hold Alt or Option and then click this so that this color now clips into there. Now this is set to luminosity, so it's only affecting tones. We're gonna to set this to color. So this color, will only be applying the color to the image and will not affect the luminance value based on the color that we pick. So let's double click this. We can select an arbitrary color here just by moving this around to see what color we're gonna want here. Cyan's kinda look nice. Or we can click somewhere in the image and find a color in the image that's gonna work based on the colors that are already in the image. So we find this highlight glow that we have here coming across this uh, wood panel here, that's going to create a nice glowing warm orange look or we can click on something like a darker blue or a lighter blue to make this feel colder. I do want it to feel warmer so I'm going to click on something like that and press OK. Now with that we could drop the opacity here so it's not quite as strong. We just get that really nice color applied to that diffused look and that looks wonderful. So here's our before and here's our after. So what we've done, we've added the diffused look to our image we then modified the tonal value of that diffusion with the curve, and then we modify the color of that diffusion with a solid color overlay. The big question when it comes to any one of my techniques is does this work on multiple genres of photography? Yes, it'll work on landscape style architecture or architecture. It'll work on landscape images like we see here, and it will even work on wildlife photography like we see here. I'm gonna show you how this works with the action on a building or architecture within a landscape. So let's take a look at our actions here. I've created this actions folder here called Blooming Highlight Diffusion. It's very simple. If you don't know how it works, click on this instructions for use and press play. It'll tell you exactly how this works. The first thing that we're gonna do here is our diffusion base. We press play. It's gonna duplicate all of our work regardless of where we are and how many layers that we have. It's also going to make it a smart object so that you can modify any of this stuff in the future. It's gonna give you some instructions on how you need to operate this. We're gonna press continue. And with our blur here, I'm gonna select a bigger blur because it is a larger uh, file size and we'll press okay. Now this is gonna set us up with our diffusion base, a mask for it, some smart filters over here so you can modify those things later. And also that diffusion modifier with our curve right there. However, that curve that I put on there, I want you don't, I don't want you to have to memorize that. So if you press play on this curve boost, it's automatically going to select this curve no matter where you are in your layer stack and make that very similar curve so we can control our midtones here and have our highlights and our shadows kind of protected here. I did add two buttons here called fade shadows and fade highlights and also fade shadows and highlights. So that's three buttons. Uh, essentially what that's going to do is if you press play on this, it's going to select your diffusion base and it's going to protect your darkest dark areas from receiving this effect. What it will do then is it will make it happen on pretty much just our highlights so that our highlights bloom really nicely and our shadows maintain. If we want to reset that back to default, just press reset diffusion and now it's back to where it was. I like this at about 50%, so let's drop our diffusion to about 50%. If we press play and add a color, now it's automatically going to add the color and we can just pick what color we might want. I think a magenta works really well here, so does a green, but let's see if I like a darker, deeper blue. It's kind of a happy medium. It's got the, the, the warmth of the magenta there, but also slight coolness of the green to give us uh, a nice color grade for this. So very quickly, just by the click of a couple of buttons, we've got that diffused look on our image. And like I said, these actions are downloadable for you. I'm gonna show you one more time on this image here. We'll press our diffusion base. That's gonna go ahead and duplicate our work. And that's gonna give us the option to change the Gaussian blur here. I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger. I like a, a creamy kind of milky effect for my diffusion. That looks pretty good, we'll press okay. My curve boost, I just like this. It's a good default curve boost. It does a really wonderful job of exploiting that diffusion while maintaining our uh, highlights and shadows. Uh, and then for this one, I'll add a color as well. Press play on that color. And maybe we want this to be a little bit of a warmer color. Maybe we want it to be a cooler color. Depends on the landscape, depends on the image that we have here. Maybe we make it like a magenta color. It's almost sunset in the fog. I don't know. We can just click around and we can select a color from the image or we can make 
a color selection exactly from the color picker, depending on which direction we want to go with the color in this image. Uh, so let's take a look at our before and after on this after the diffusion looks wonderful. Now, like I said, it also works on wildlife imagery. And as you can see here, I've got a mask that goes on that diffused look. There might be times when we want to paint out the area where it's affecting. Maybe I don't want this face to have that diffusion on there. So I'm going to paint with the color black and that will make sure that that diffusion goes away on the face of the bird. And it works well. It takes high contrast areas, specifically darker areas, and it just borrows a little bit of the highlights from other places in the image and spreads it out nicely over the photograph to make the image sometimes a little bit more inviting, less contrasty, less confrontational in a way. Uh, lots of high contrast can make us feel a little bit of anxiety. This invites us in and it can also create a nice warm effect on our image. I highly recommend you experimenting with this on your images. If you don't want to do all the stuff that I did here, go ahead and click right here and you can download these actions and basically make a nice little diffusion panel within your actions palette. I certainly hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing. I like to take difficult things in Photoshop and make them seemingly simple so that you can use them in your workflow today.